Thank you, Abby. Uh, so in this uh, talk, I will present uh, a protocol for the specific case of three parties that is secure against uh, a malicious adversary who controls a minority of the parties. And this protocol achieves a uh, high throughput. Um, okay. so, uh, so in our setting, we have three parties who wish to compute jointly some functionality. Uh, and since we require an honest majority, it means that only one of the parties may be corrupted. Um, okay, and we assume that the functionality that we want to compute is represented by a Boolean circuit, and we consider security with a boat, meaning that uh, we, achieve, we achieve privacy and correctness. We don't guarantee fairness, or we and we don't guarantee that there will be an output. The only thing we guarantee that is that if the parties did not abort during, during the computation, then then the output is correct. Um, okay, so uh, a few words about what we mean when we say we want to achieve high throughput security trick party computation. So in general, we have uh, two ways to measure the performance of a protocol. So the first way is to, uh, right, to, to, to see how much time it takes to compute a single function. This is what we call the latency of a protocol. Uh, a different way is to, um, to see how many functions we can compute in a single unit of time, let's say one second. This is what we call uh, the throughput of the protocol. Uh, now, these are not uh, just uh, ways, ways to measure a protocol, but also different goals that are translated into different designs of protocol. So if we want to achieve, for example, low latency, then we usually probably we, we, we would like to have constant runs of communication, and this will be done uh, using what uh, we call the garbled circuit, appro circuit approach when we sent large amounts of data in, um, in a very few rounds. On the other hand, if we want to achieve high throughput, then we care less about the number of rounds and we care more about low bandwidth and simple computations because even if the parties need to, to wait for messages to arrive, then meanwhile they can start already the next computation. So, in, so, we, so when we want to achieve high throughput, we usually we would like to uh, pipeline the computations as much as we can. And in this case, we, we will use the secret sharing approach, which, which is what we will uh, um, do in this case, in our, in our protocol. So uh, the starting point of our protocol is the semi-honest protocol from uh, CCS16 uh, by Arakai, Furukawa, Lindel, O'Hara, and myself uh, that is based on replicated secret sharing. And it has a very low communication. It requires only one bit of communication uh, sent by each party per end gate. Uh, and when we implemented it, it uh, achieved uh, a throughput of over 7 billion end gates per second, which is translated to over a million AS operations per second. So this gives us a motivation to take this protocol and compile it into a maliciously secured protocol with, uh, with low cost. Um, so when we move from semi-honest to, malicious, to, uh, to a malicious, uh, maliciously secured protocol, we ask basically three, three uh, questions. So the first question is how do we uh, force the corrupted party uh, to share its inputs on the, on the input wires correctly? Uh, the second question is how to verify that end gates where we have interaction between the parties uh, are computed correctly. And the last question is how to verify that the values on the output wires are uh, reconstructed correctly. So uh, the first and the last questions are um, solved in a very standard way in our protocol. I will only focus from now on on the second question, question of how to verify that end gates were computed uh, correctly. So uh, this also, this is what actually um, determines the throughput of the protocol. So we, this is the, what um, the, the, the interesting question. So we follow the, uh, the Beaver triple method as in many other protocols. So uh, in, Beaver, in, uh, in this method, we have, uh, we consider multiplication triples, which is a triple of shares, A, B, and C that are shared among the parties, uh, such that C equals A times B. Now, every time we compute an end gate, we also generate such, such a multiplication triple, uh, where the X and Y are the shares on the input wires of the gate, and Z, Z, uh, Z is the share of the output wire of this gate. Now, assume we have um, uh, an, another random triple, or A, B, and C. Um, so we have this sub-protocol in our protocol called tri triple verification using another without opening that uh, has the property that if we have uh, a valid random triple, a correct random triple, then we can use it to verify a multiplication triple that was generated uh, when computing end gates um, and, and detect cheating with probability one. 
Okay, so if we if the uh, corrupted party uh, cheated in j in the in an end gate in, in a computation of an end gate, so and if we have a valid um, random triple, we can detect it with probability one, and and to implement this to um, and this sub protocol requires in our protocol a very it has very low communication costs costs only two bits per each party. So this already gives us a very simple online protocol to start with. So after sharing the inputs, the parties run uh, the semi-honest protocol, and then they use the uh, verification protocol that I just mentioned to verify all end gate computations. So uh, and then they reconstruct the output. So this because of, because the semi-honest protocol requires uh, one bit of communication per uh, each part per party and verification requires two bits of communication parity, so we already have an online protocol that has a uh, communication of only three bits uh, per party. So the only question remains, of, of course, is how we generate these random triples that are used in the, in the verification step. Uh, so, uh, so now we will focus on the uh, preprocessing protocol or offline protocol that generates this, uh, these triples. Okay, so how do we generate correct random multiplication triples? So uh, in our protocol, we, can, we start by generating just random shares. So um, we generate, so we can generate random shares without any interaction. Um, okay, so we can, uh, the, it requires no interaction between the parties except to some setup step uh, of, generating, of generating keys that are later used to generate, to uh, using AS to generate as much random sharings as we want, and then we uh, compute the sharing of C using the semi-honest protocol. So this requires only one bit of communication, and now the question remains is, of course, is how to verify that, that this triple is valid, because we use the semi-honest protocol to generate it, so the, the corruptive party, party my, my, uh, may cheat. So we use here the cut and choose uh, method, or if you want, the cut and choose and bucket method. So we start by generating a large amount of um, multiplication triple, random multiplication triple in the w uh, using the semi-honest protocol. Since it is so cheap to generate them, we can generate uh, a large amount of triples. And after we did that, we start, uh, we continue with um, doing, with, uh, with, with uh, promoting uh, randomly these triples. Now the key here is that, of course, the parties cannot know the actual permutation before they generated th uh, the initial list um, of triples. Um, and then after we promoted the, uh, the triples, we open, uh, we sacrifice, we open C triples from this list. Uh, and when I say open, we, I mean that the actual values of these uh, triples are, are, being, uh, is being, uh, are being revealed to the parties. And, and therefore, if one of the open triples is incorrect, then the honest parties will detect it and abort. Okay, so this is the first test. If we pass uh, this test, we continue by taking the remaining triples and split them into uh, n buckets of equal size. Uh, in each bucket, we have beta triples. Uh, okay, so the next step, now we have uh, these buckets, and then we verify the first triple in each bucket using the other beta minus one triples. We do that using the uh, verification, uh, multi uh, ver verification sub protocol, verification of one triple using another that I mentioned before. So we uh, execute for each bucket this sub protocol beta minus one times, and, and, if, um, and if we pass this test too, then we take the first triple in each bucket and output it, um, and output it, and this is the output of the preprocessing protocol. And now the property we have here is that if one of the buckets is mixed, meaning that it has uh, both bad and good triples, then, then the honest parties will detect it uh, with, probabil with probability one and abort. Okay, so the only way that Versary can win, can uh, make the preprocessing protocol output an incorrect triple, is by uh, having a bucket that is fully bad, that contains only bad triples. Okay, so, um, okay, so, uh, so this is the, um, the, the process of cut and choose. Now, if we look at the uh, cost, of, at the communication cost of this uh, process, so to, to generate the first, uh, the initial list of m uh, random triples, we need m bits of communication per each party. Then we open c triples, so we need uh, three bits for each opening, so we need three c bits. 
And then we uh, run the sub protocol of verification, um, beta minus time for n buckets, and it costs two bits of communication, so we have uh, this communication cost. So overall, we, uh, we get this formula for, for the communication cost, and obviously uh, this depends on the values of beta, the size of the bucket, and C, the amount of circles that we open. So, uh, and so of course, as we increase these parameters, there's the probability that the adversary wins is smaller, but on the other hand, it, it increases also the uh, cost of the protocol. So, uh, so this protocol can, so this process can, view can be viewed as, uh, as a communitarial game, uh, where we have an adversary who chooses uh, n beta plus c balls, where each ball can be better good. A ball is, of course, a multiplication triple in our protocol, and then c balls are randomly uh, chosen and opened, and if a bad ball was opened, then the adversary loses, and then the balls are randomly thrown into n buckets of size beta, and only if, and the adversary wins, if and only if all buckets are fully good or fully bad. Okay, and the goal is that given some uh, statistical parameter, sigma, and a number of triple, a number of triples that we want to generate, we want to find beta of C or minimal size, or minimal size because we want to minimize the communication cost, such that, that the, probabil the probability that uh, the adversary will win is smaller than two to the minus sigma. Uh, so this is the combinatorial game. So we are not the first one to investigate uh, this uh, combinatorial game. It was already investigated in the tiny OT protocol. Uh, we present in, uh, in our uh, paper uh, uh, an improved combinatorial analysis, which gives, uh, which is tighter. And just to, to sh for, for an example, if we take, assume, let's say we want to generate a million triples, n equals million, and the statistical security parameter is 40, then uh, according to their analysis, you need uh, th that the size of the bucket will be four. We need only uh, the, si the size of the bucket in our, in our analysis is only three. We need to open much less triples, and therefore, uh, we need to generate much less triples uh, to start with in the in the spare processing protocol. Um, so finally, if we use uh, this, uh, these exact parameters, we can see uh, the, the whole protocol. So we have the pair processing protocol when we where we start to gen with, with generating n beta plus six triples, um, which with these parameters, it's three million triples. We open only three triples, that's all. And then we uh, split them into buckets, um, into million buckets, and use uh, beta minus one triples to verify one triple, which means we need to, for each bucket, we need to uh, run the, ver the verification sub protocol exactly twice. And if we look at the overall communication, it costs seven bits per end gate. Um, so overall, with these parameters, we need exactly 10 bits per end gate um, uh, sent per each party. So we started the, with the same minus protocol, with which, uh, has, uh, which has a communication of one bit per party, and, and to achieve uh, malicious security, we need to blow up uh, the communication by a factor of 10. Uh, so uh, just to show an efficiency comparison to a work from CCS 16 by Mossal, Roslick, and Zen, they presented the protocols in the same setting, three parties and one corrupted party, uh, one malicious uh, corrupted party that has the same communication of a semi-honest Yao. Okay, so it's a very efficient protocol, and as you can see, we for each end gate they need a, a 85 bit. We need only 10, and we and we need um, much less uh, AES computations per end gate. Uh, but of course, their their protocol is uh, has uh, uh, achieves achieves a constant runs, so it ha it has uh, its own justification. Um, so we'll finish with uh, with telling you that we have a follow-up paper. Uh, that will appear in IEEE uh, 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 SMP. Uh, and in this paper, we managed to re reduce the communication even further from 10 bits to 7 bits. Uh, this is achieved by a better combinatorics that allows us to, to reduce the size of the bucket from 3 to 2. Uh, we also managed to reduce the computational work by replacing the, uh, the random permutation that we have here in this protocol. Re recall that we need to run to permute uh, an array of million triples, of three million triples actually. So this has a, so when you implement it, you, you have uh, many uh, cache misses. So we, rem so we uh, presented uh, a way to shuffle uh, uh, the array that is, ca that, is, that is cache efficient and it is not a random permutation, but even though it, it has, we can show uh, communitarily that it achieves the same level of security. 
And when implementing it, um, so the basic implementation of the protocol that I just presented you achieves a, a throughput of uh, 500 uh, uh, million end gates per second. And after the optimization, we will manage to break the 1 billion gate barrier um, in the presence of a malicious adversary, which is much, mu much more than um, was known before. Of course, it's for a specific setting, um, but it still, uh, it still achieves a very high throughput. And that would be all. Thank you very much. Plenty of time for questions. So I will ask one. How do you do the permutation for the preprocessing? So is that in the seven? That's counted in the seven n bits. So it's actually you don't. Uh, it's actually almost without any iteration. You start by generating random shells with which don't, doesn't require any communication, and then you open it, and then this is a seed that you use, that use it to generate how, much, uh, how many uh, fed randomness that you need. So basically, it's a constant cost. OK. So the, the, the uh, Oakland paper, does it actually, the title doesn't say three-party. Does it actually extend so to? So the, uh, all the methods that we show there are, are generic can be uh, applied to any entity protocol that's used as uh, this kind of static field method. But the, the implementation is in there is for this specific case of the three parties. But the, the methods there are definitely generic. So have you tried running for like five or seven or something like that? No, we didn't try that. Uh, okay. The problem is that this protocol is based on replicated secret sharing. Um, so as we know, this kind of secret sharing um, grow the size of the share in this uh, sharing grows exponentially with the number of parties. But for five or seven, maybe it will still be uh, yeah. efficient. But we didn't. 